I like to go where there are no people. So I drove across the huge state of Montana and was completely alone for a thousand miles, except for this horse and this guy. Good to meet you. And these buffalo. They're, they're getting a little close for me. I mean, everybody's been to Yellowstone Park. Everybody knows about Glacier. Ooh, look, Daddy, look, it's a wow. rabbit. Oh. I can do that with Mentos. Let's go pet the buffalo. And yeah, they're awesome. But have you ever ridden with buffalo on the yep. plains of Montana? My horse is thinking, what the hell is that? <laughs> have you ever dug a dinosaur rib out of the side of a hill? Oh, I've done That's a long one. rib. Or maybe herded up teenage cows and watched yep, them yep, scatter yep, like yep, cats. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh. Crap. So join me for the next four days as we do just that. I'm Trinity. Welcome to Life in the West. So first time a horse has been in here, as far as I can tell, he's like, whoa, that is so new. <laughs> you don't even know what to do in here, do you? Oh, he's going to take a dump right in the trailer. First thing. They always do that. Every time you load up, up in something clean, you got to take a dump. Okay, so now... There we go. So that's where Calabar will ride. Lord, I, I pray you're, that you would bless Dad and all his work and you would help all the horses to operate well and uh, pray a blessing upon everything that he touches and keep your hand upon the vehicles and the horse. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. See you later, Dad. Okay. I got this list of stuff that I put together, my checklist. Everything's packed up. We're gonna head across Montana. So I just thought I'd stop and get a, make myself a sandwich. Overlooking some ranch country here. Most of Montana is actually prairie, which is, you know, sagebrush and grass. So right here we have a good example of that. You can see the mountains way over there. You can see, and then this is just a valley. This is a high valley. This is pretty high in elevation, probably about 6,000, 6,500 feet. I'm gonna pop. I'm a man of very pretty simple tastes. Even though I like nice things, I, I usually eat like the same thing. I wear the same thing all the time. So I'm just making a, a salami low carb wrap. So I've been eating low carb ever since I had COVID and it seems to really, really help my long-term symptoms for that. As you can see, I've got um, my napkin right here. See my napkin? I use this, wipe my face off and, you know, clean up messes, things like that. And if I get to Sun Prairie, then I pack everything up on Calabar and go out onto the prairie and spend the night out there with the buffalo. So I should mention that Steer and Trailer Sales has given me this trailer to use. Steer and Trailer Sales offers horse trailers, stock trailers, cargo trailers, flatbed trailers, and many, many more types of trailers. For all your trailer needs, go to steerin.com. They're located in Three Forks, Montana, and make sure you tell them Trinity sent you. Whoever buys this trailer right here from him uh, will be able to get $500 off if you tell him that you saw it from Trinity. Hmm. Okay, head down the trail. Well, the sun's starting to go down, so I gotta get to where I'm going. I'm still 40 miles away on a gravel road like this, which is a long ways. And you can see, I always love being in this kind of country. Some people don't don't like it as much as the mountains but it is very unique because all around you you can just imagine riding through this country 150 years ago and seeing herds of buffalo everywhere out here I got to my destination and it's totally dark so I won't be able to do what I was gonna do which was pack everything up and camp out on the prairie here but um, at least we'll get to ride with the buffalo tomorrow so I'm just gonna uh, get old Calabar situated here a little bit and then we'll sit up something to sleep in
is when you turn a light on with horses, it just screws their eyes up and they can't see a thing. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, time up, you won't be able to see me. And so I'll talk to you in a little bit. I can't see where I'm at. I don't even know where I'm at exactly. I just had to tie the horse up to the corral fence and, and uh, feed him some hay. And then at dawn, I'll kind of figure out where I'm at. It's too, too bad I got here a little late. So I, I set out my pad right here, blew that up, and my sleeping bag. And I'm going to get ready for bed. So supper tonight is going to be trail mix and water. <laughs> Don't ever do this in bear country. Do not eat in your tent in bear country. Don't ever do that. I'm not in bear country and I'm in a hard side vehicle. That's why I'm doing that. Now I'm going to put a pair of socks right here along with the shoes. I've got shorts on and that's just in case I have to get up in the middle of the night if there's a my horse uh, sounds the alarm or something um, due to a buffalo bull being right here or something then I can get my stuff on right away. So that's why. So make sure you set out that stuff. Think ahead because otherwise you'll have something happen in the middle of the night and you wear the socks. It's it's pretty warm in here, so it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. I will see you at dawn, hopefully. Well good morning. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do today. I know there's a bunch of buffalo over there, and I know I'm not sure what people want to know about buffalo, but we're going to start talking about them. I'm going to saddle up my horse and go over there a little bit. And then we'll cook a little bit of breakfast back here at camp. I got plenty of sleep. Calabar really needs to, to drink some water. He hasn't drank any water yet. I led him over there, but he didn't drink anything. Didn't drink anything last night either. bulls right over there so I'm gonna pile on him and we'll go check him out right Calabar mm -hmm. right buddy there's a buffalo right there I, I don't know if you can see it but my horse is thinking what the hell is that <laughs> he don't want to go over there he's like are you nuts you can't figure out what it is you can tell he is tense it's a big buffalo bull. Let's see if we can untrack him here and get him to go over and get some water, but he's not convinced that that's a great idea to go near that thing. <laughs> I'm not that I'm going to go near him, but I'm just trying to come down here to water. He's so tense. It's incredible to step back in time right here. I'm stepping back in time and actually seeing what they would have seen from a horse, just like they would have seen it 200 years ago. Sometimes I don't think about what I'm saying because there's a modern water trough right in front of me. But other than that, he was within about 200 yards. So it wasn't like they were hard to kill back in the day either. He's finally gonna, Calabar's finally gonna drink something this morning maybe. Whoa. Well, we need to go for a little ride because Calabar here is 
acting like he's got too much gumption yet. Oh, there's a coyote. No. Yeah, right there. Kind of on the edge of two worlds. They got the American Prairie right here. And there's a lot that, that people, that ranchers don't really like about American Prairie because of them buying up the land and everything. And look at down here, they're making this into a preserve so that's like it was 200 years ago. And right over there is cattle. Now on the American Prairie Reserve, there's also 9,000 head of cattle. So they're not, not all the areas that the American Prairie Reserve is actually uh, controls just has buffalo but this this particular piece has buffalo on it so it's always interesting to see the clash of the two worlds nothing nothing goes smoothly when you clash two worlds together you can see that throughout history kind of just wanted to warm him up a little bit and then we're going to go back and cook some breakfast at the camp and then after that we'll come back out here and see if we can get a few cool shots of some buffalo and talk about how they disappeared what the reason they disappeared, because it probably isn't what you think. And uh, we'll talk about those kind of things. One thing you can see here is all the prickly pear cactus is still there. See that? That's original. That's native to Montana and always caused problems for Lewis and Clark because if you walk through this stuff, you can see it down in there, I think. It's right there. So, right here, it's a little bit taller. It's probably six inches tall. So, my horse is having to pick his way through it because if he steps on the wrong place, it will get down right on the hock. It'll stick into his hock. I can actually walk right over it with boots, but the... When Lewis and Clark and the Indians were out here, and they had to actually walk on this with moccasins, I mean, you'd either have to have hard sole moccasins, several layers. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's way more aggressive, taller prickly pear than I have at my where I live in western Montana. It's a little lower. It doesn't it doesn't grow as quite as tall. I have a book about gambling in the old west and they're showing some some of the races they did like foot races and the native american indians they would come out here and run in bare feet how in the world you would ever run across the prairie and bare feet out here i don't know you had to have feet that were tougher than a horse hoof because you're going to get prickly pear cactus in it it doesn't matter where you go Now I'm just gonna cook myself up some breakfast and then we'll go see if we can find some more buffalo. We're gonna make some sausage and some coffee. And luckily, for once in the whole history of Montana, it's not blowing today. Like that. My titanium spoon for backpacking. If you want me to be a chef, you're I think you're gonna be lacking a little bit. I think that's starting to boil over there. Woo, that steam always gets you, man. It's nasty. Hot, hot, hot. All right, put that on for a minute. Let that steep. Almost got the sausage done here. There, it's almost done.
Don't go telling everybody that this is like a phenomenal meal because it's not, but it is good. It's good and hearty. It sticks with you for a long time. I'm a huge fan of sausage. My wife probably gets sick just looking at this. <laughs> now, out on the prairie in the old days, you probably would have had bacon instead of sausage, <laughs> especially this kind of sausage. Or what they called sow belly. What they called bacon back then. Mmm. It's hot enough. I assumed you knew that. <laughs> I think this coffee's ready, so I'm gonna push this down. Instead of creamer, because I'm trying to stay away from carbs as much as I can, I got this uh, Atkins protein shake, and I use it as my... That's way too much. <laughs> when I'm talking to the camera, I always put too much in there. That's Atkins creamer, uh, Atkins uh, protein shake, and I just put some in there. When I do that, it actually smooths my coffee out. It's really good. I think it's good. <clears throat> it's not, I don't know if it's as good as actual, like, really flavored creamer, but it's pretty good. So, it was such a beautiful morning after finishing my sausage and sitting there with my cup of coffee and just soaking in the utter quiet and the warmth of the morning sun. I piled back on Calabar and we went out across the prairie to ride with buffalo. Hey girl, that's close enough. I don't really want to get my horse stuck in the gut or something. So we'll leave her behind. <laughs> They're all curious. Oh, they're gonna follow me, I suppose. So this, the American Prairie actually does give out tags for a certain amount of hunting opportunities for these buffalo, for two-year-old bulls. And then I think this year they finally did a couple of mature bulls. Actually, I think it's either sex, which means you can hunt anything you want. But they are not used, so they're used to being hunted a little bit. So I think if you're on foot, they wouldn't do this. But since I'm on a horse and hardly anybody else comes out here without a, with a horse like this, they're a little bit kind of wondering what I am <laughs> like what is he doing over there all right I'm done I think I'm finished with my video up here on the American Prairie and uh, I don't know hopefully it turned out all right so I'm gonna head over to the pickup and get my horse unsaddled and work my way over to Glendive so Ca Calabar here is doing really well he did good when them buffalo started walking up to him too back there this morning he ran into a bull, a, a buffalo bull, and uh, he did not know what to think of that deal first. He was like, what in the world is that animal? And I assumed, I kind of assumed that 
being as he's been around cows so much that that it wouldn't matter he would just like walk right up to them but apparently they're different enough in they can tell that they're quite a bit different in scent i could tell he was really scent in the wind when i was around this cow herd and he was very hesitant in his body they walked right up to i don't know 50 yards away from me 75 yards away from me they would have walked right up to me but that's not a great idea to let a buffalo walk right up to you on the ground or on a horse because on a horse they can hook you hook your horse cause a big problem one thing i'm not used to being from the western part of montana is there's all kinds of like streams running water everywhere out there so you never have to worry about water out here in eastern montana there's actually you're actually should bring some water for your horse or a way to water them like a, a a tub or something so you can run water out of a spigot into it which i don't have never even thought of it because i i live out and i've never really been out here with a horse in eastern montana so something you need to take you know be aware of when you're out in the plains areas and it also makes me think how little water there was for the people that were crossing these plains I mean, especially with like herds of cattle when they were having cattle drives. I mean, the water around here is like stagnant pools of water that have been sitting there not moving for, uh, it's, it's disgusting like water. So when you're, I, I can't imagine coming across here, no wonder they had trouble with those herds running to water because it'd be so, so long between water holes sometimes that the cows would start smelling water and take off running and they had to be really careful that they didn't get a stampede i bet he's going to be ready to get this off watch this Woo! oh yeah oh what do you think huh feel good feel good does it feel alright? Huh? Now normally I would put this pad in the tackle, but it stinks so bad and I have to sleep in there, so I'm gonna put it in the back. <laughs> Let's get rolling down the road so we can get him some air. Get those flies off. Flies are pretty bad, but if you can get them in a trailer moving, then I'll just put it there. Come here, bud. Come on, buddy. There you go. There you go, buddy. Step up. I really like that little thing in the front for the horse like that. This, this trailer is 24 feet long, so it's a touch long if you don't have any lots of horses like that it's actually because of the it's 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 that long because it's got such a huge tack room in it and the tack room is massive and I'm, I'm just using it as a living quarters as well even though it, you know it doesn't have any of the amenities that a living quarters horse trailer would have but good enough for me all i need is a place to sleep so we're gonna head out now towards Glendive. I can't even tell how much, how far that is because I don't have any service here. Driving across Montana lengthwise is such an enormous distance. I mean, it's taken me two days, but I'm spending hours upon hours of driving for two days. And I wasn't even starting on the, the other end of the state so just think about this you can drive from the bottom corner of Montana to Texas and that's the same amount of miles or less miles than it is from one one side of the state to the other side of the state <laughs> that's pretty incredible so tonight uh, I'm actually headed to a guy in Glasgow he's a rancher and he but he doesn't make all of his money from ranching he makes his money from dinosaurs so I'm interested to see what that means how he's making his 
his living from dinosaurs and uh, hopefully you'll be interested too. Okay, well, I'm back in the trailer. Um, just got to my destination. I talked to Justin, who's the guy who owns the place that we're going to go dinosaur hunting tomorrow. That should be interesting. I'm going to get a good night's sleep, hopefully. Um, pretty under the weather right now, which sucks. I got Calabar put away and gave him some... It was pitch black when I got here, so I, uh, I gave him some hay and put him in a corral here, so... Okay, well, let's see where we're at this morning. We came here. Showed up here last night in the dark. Oh, man, I got a cold. Sorry, I don't sound very good. Anyway, I'm going to go check on Calabar and see if he needs any hay. I fed him quite a bit last night. Well, there's these big stinking spiders here and we just about walked right through like like big honking ones like cookie spiders just about walked through like six of them going down here last night there's a big spider right there too trying, to, trying not to walk through one how you doing there buddy huh how you doing there, buddy? How's it going? You in a new spot? You in a brand new... Oh, he's like, oh boy, yeah. Yeah. He pretty much ate everything last night. Right here. Let me grab you some more hay, okay? I'll grab you some more. I'll be right back. Apparently, this ranch used to be like five or 600 cows. And now they run like 350 cows and do dinosaur bone digs. I've never been on anything like that, so let's see how they do it. There you go, bud. You take care of that. I'm going to be gone for a couple, several hours. So, you got it? Yeah, he's seen me. He's like, yep, I know you're there. You gave me some hay. I'm good. So, <laughs> Eastern Montana is full of these, those like carved out hills over there. And I'm sure that's probably where they dig for dinosaur bones, I'm assuming, or fossils. They invited me over for breakfast. I'm not sure if I want to try to spread this cold around. So, but I don't have any service here. So I'm going to have to drive over there and kind of see if they're okay with me being sick around them. This is Justin and Shanna. Shanna. We're just sitting here having coffee. Actually, they're ranchers who support their habit with dinosaurs, right? Yes. So you guide people to dig up dinosaurs? Yes. You dig with an excavator or what? No, just backhoe? mostly, mostly Shovels? by hand. Yep, yeah, mostly by hand. A lot of screwdrivers and brushes and knives. The Baiches were such nice people. I just felt like I'd known them all my life, even though I'd met them 30 seconds ago. And they allowed me to join the group that was going out that day on an excursion to find dinosaur fossils. Yeah, this one is sitting. So. Uh huh. This one is settled, or you know, mucked up right here. It's a rock crossing. So it's. it's so it's on rock underneath there? So after driving way out into the boonies, Shanna got everybody out of the vehicles and we started hiking up to the tops where we could look for dinosaur bones. So interesting to see this country. I mean, I've been out here a couple of times uh, near Broadus. And it's kind of the same kind of stuff. It's just this 
kind of clay. It's really, really hard packed clay, but then the water washes it away like every time it rains. So, which creates like spots where things are exposed and that's what they're looking for out here. It's just incredible to think that at one point there was dinosaurs walking around right where we're moving cows. So supposedly tomorrow I'll be over there, over there at that ranch over there moving yearlings. It's a very unique country. You can see the rocks on the very tops of the hills. Basically everything is just washed away except for the rocks. up here is about it's at least 20 so this is where I have a hat that fits comes in play need a hat that's just a little oversized so you can put it down lower on your head I'm gonna grab that knowledge bump back there Okay, well, I can see how she can, when you start getting into this, it's kind of interesting because I, I found something here. Now, to me, that looks like a tooth, but, or a set of teeth. I'm going to go ask the, ask the um, experts over here. Shauna, she, she says that this gets addictive, and I can see why. If you're, if you're finding pieces of bone everywhere, you know, it, it can be, I'm sure it gets fascinating like when are you going to find the big one you know that that's really the the interesting part about it is the hunt it's like what can you find because you don't ever know what you could locate i found this very interesting in the smithsonian magazine it talks about uh, a t-rex being sold for 8.4 million in 1997 and then stan another t-rex skeleton was auctioned off for 31 million in 2020, including fees. Now that is definitely worth looking for, but I really was not very good at this. I would probably walk right past a $5 million skeleton and never know it was there. Uh, just bone pieces. Oh, okay. There's one right there. What um, is this? Uh, that's a cow or a buffalo. Is it? Yeah. Cause it was yeah. in the, <laughs> embedded in the underneath the rock in the white stuff there yeah, yeah. wow we just yesterday um uh dallas here found he found uh, almost a whole skeleton of something really and it, i don't know how it got there because it's a long ways down they're really pretty you yeah. know if they were fossilized we would just think they were the, the best find ever oh absolutely right here is something see this yep weird thing actually i think it's probably a copper it looks like a tooth but in this case, I think it's probably a... Let's just tie it out of there. Oh, there's a whole jaw. Oopsie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one doesn't stay together. Copper light. Is the poop. Dino poop. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. There was only... And how would you know that that's a, a bone? There was just that much. See, there's the line where it's sticking out of the... Yeah? How would you know it's a bone by looking just at by the Just well, by the couple days, uh, you know picking up this and you know and you kind of just learn to identify yeah, that yeah, I've, I've picked a lot of arrowheads and stuff so yeah you learn you know textures huh because i would have thought that i would just saw that and just said oh there's a rock yeah that would have been me a few <laughs> days ago but i think it's ready to oh yeah it's coming out oh look at that oh it's like three-sided what the heck is it a vertebrae or is it i'm thinking it might be something to do with the toe or yeah, i don't know or an ankle yeah i think this is probably some something to do in the foot it's got like three i'd, I'd agree with that is it like an ankle or um, Probably something more like the tarsals or something like that. Oh, or okay. something in here. So, huh. knuckle or smaller bone. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's you incredible. Excavated out, you can see the size of this rib here because it starts right here. Over here, comes out this way. This piece right here uh, sticks out and then comes right on to way over to there. So what? what is that? Probably five feet at least. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <clears throat> yeah, That's a long a rib. Long, like, it's a what percentage of the ranch now is supported by this and what's what percentage do you support with cattle? Do you know? I don't. No, yeah. Is it about um, even or is it just part of like a supplemental thing to cattle or? Well, probably the last couple of years it's probably been um, at least 50% of the income of the actual profit. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know, with the drought in 21, it was it was the profit. Right. <laughs> the it was profit the only in profit in 21. <laughs> How do they book a trip with you? Um, I've got a website, an ancient one, so everybody, they just either call or, or, um, email me. An AncientOne.com? <laughs> no, DailyDinosaurDigs.com. DailyDinosaurDigs.com. I'll yeah. put the link down below. Alright, well, we're back from digging dinosaurs. I'm back from digging dinosaurs <clears throat> on this ranch. Kind of, I found out a lot of information about why they do it and how that saved their ranch so that should be an interesting video if i can put it together correctly who knows i never know if i actually get a good video until i get back home and edit it and then i'm always disappointed so <laughs> like trinity you should have done this or done that i'm gonna feed my horse i am feeling so sick so miserable i'm gonna feed my horse here and go to bed it's like eight or something still gonna go to bed don't even care so i will see you guys tomorrow how you doing i know i know not getting any exercise i wish i wasn't sick i'd go tomorrow and ride you but we'll see if i'm feeling better in the morning okay so been invited to go help move yearlings tomorrow which would be fantastic except for I look I look horribly sick feel terrible <coughs> and all I want to do is just go to bed so I'll see what I feel like in the morning hopefully I can turn a corner and do okay all right so this morning I got Calabar all saddled up in the dark and we're headed over to somebody's ranch to move yearlings. I've never ridden in this country over here. I, you know, I rode for the first time in uh, eastern Montana last, or this week, I guess. It seems like last week, but a, a day ago. I really have a cold. It was pretty rough last night, but I feel somewhat better today, so I decided I should still go, and we'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, and then I'll leave for back home after we get these yearlings all in the corral and shipped so we'll see what what they need help with how much help they need sometimes sometimes you end up at these things and there's there's like tons of help sometimes there's hardly any help so it's kind of uh kind of play it by ear a little bit how you doing kirk good, good to meet you nice to meet you too so this is justin justin bice right here and and he's the dinosaur guy. There was 650 yearlings spread out all over this pasture. Some were up in the hills, some were down in the bottoms. So when you're talking about like grass-fed beef, most most beef is grass-fed for most of its life because they're they're weaned at about six months, and then once they're weaned. Then they go to somebody that usually puts them on grass as a yearling. And then after they're done with that, then they go to finishing, which is then, then it's grain or something like that. So, and what we're doing here, we're moving the cows. These, these cows are, because they're yearlings, it's like a bunch of teenagers. So you gotta be very slow. You don't wanna, you don't wanna rip and yeehaw and yell because they'll just take off at a dead run and and go wherever they feel like it 
So, kind of like buffalo. <clears throat> yeah. Go over there. Okay. I'm gonna nudge this one. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Get going. Come on. One, one stupid one. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. There he is. He's going. Hey, hey. Come on, cow. Hip, hip. Get up there, boy. Oh, you're going to come back, huh? Get down there. Hip, hip. Hip, 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 hip. Picking the worst spot you can. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> he came down. Yeah. Um, well, his, his parents, one's, one's named Calabar and one's named Hannah Barr, so my dad mixed them. <laughs> Once we had them all gathered into one big group, we had them almost to the krell, and then this happened. Come on, Oh, you're going to come right around? Hip, 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 hip. Yep, yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. 
Of course. Yep, yep, yep. Goodness. So they're gonna load these, they're gonna finish. Well, actually they've, they've weighed all the ones that are here. So they'll start loading trucks. And then they got like 60 head out there still that we lost. So they're coming back over the hill. And when they get those in, they'll only have to weigh those, but that'll only take a little while because there's like six loads. So I think I'm gonna unsaddle old Galabar here and load him back up, old Galabar. I always say old, but he's he's only five, so it's not old, but he's pretty antsy. We get to run him out, got to run a little bit of energy out of him, not a whole lot. But we're gonna I'm gonna unsaddle him and throw him in the trailer and head for home as soon as they come over the hill with these cattle. That ought to give me a lot more time to get home because I was thinking I was gonna get home at midnight or something tonight. What do you think there, buddy? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. We'll unsaddle you. So the more the more you help different ranchers, the more you understand how different every ranch is. It's like how their family taught them to move cows. How If it's a different kind of cow, you know, like a yearling versus cows that are pears, things like that. Everybody has a different way of moving them and how they do it. I don't think we've really screwed up too, too much here on this group of cows. I could have gone around the other side when when they took off first but they always think over these things like oh shoot you know when you don't know anybody it's very easy to think that you're in the way you got to be very careful as to how you how you assume that you, don't ever assume you're doing the right thing kind of look around see what they're saying usually they're yelling but you can't tell what they're saying i gotta try to get out of here before they these guys block me in We'll see if I can do it or not. I'm gonna have to make a really sharp corner here. <laughs> Luckily this other truck didn't pull in there. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get back out. It's noon now, or 11.15 I guess now. So I should be able to make it all the way home today. That'll be alright. That would be okay. I'm gonna, I stopped here at the Powder River. Powder River's right over there. And I figured I'd cook myself a little lunch. So I'm just gonna cut this onion up a little bit. Dice it up a touch. <laughs> there we go. You see that? We're just kind of creating a, some fat some butter and 
some onions and we're gonna cook them onions down a little bit until they start getting caramelized a touch. Trinity's pile of onion burger. <laughs> Makes no sense at all. It's a little warm today. It's either, it's either do this or you eat all kinds of junk on the road. Much rather do this. <clears throat> okay, so I got my onions kind of caramelized a little bit. Still probably a little crunchy. This hamburger is Wagyu from uh, marbled meats in Billings. So it's really good burger. It's not it's not like the normal crap burger you get from the store. It's really, really good. Just make sure we get enough salt and pepper down to the bottom. Right here. I'm gonna call it Trinity's Hamburger Hash because all it is is onions. Onions and salt and pepper, and really good beef. Let's see if I need to add some salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's the thing is, is if you have really good beef. If you get really good beef, like beef from somewhere other than just a regular grocery store, like this is, this is marbled meats. You get some really good top quality beef. It doesn't take a lot of, you know, fancy stuff to get it to taste good. Most of what I'm eating nowadays is just meat anyway. So you throw a little onions in there for some crunch and some flavor and and that that high quality meat just cars you know really plays a, a pivotal pivotal role mm. mm hmm that's perfect look at that mm. want some want some of my Hamburger hash <laughs> with nothing else in it. Just got my lunch all picked up. I'm gonna hit the road again. So I ate a pound of burger and onions right there. And it's incredible when you eat that something like that. I mean, I don't think very many people can actually handle that much fat in one sitting so don't just try that and think oh yeah that usually it'll grease up your insides a little bit if you know what i mean it gets very heavy but for me being used to it when i eat something like that it's so satisfying because you're not you're not like feel you don't feel stuffed like you do with when you eat uh like bread like pizza or something you don't feel like totally overly stuffed you just feel very satisfied you feel very satisfied but not bloated or over like i didn't overeat doesn't feel like you overate nothing like that let me get back on the highway here there's nothing clear about the powder river <laughs> kind of like the milk river <clears throat> as in their names Kind of give away the fact that they're not the clearest rivers in the world, just so you know. It is 7.09. Man, I don't know how many miles I went. It's well over a thousand. And we're here. Time to 
let Colibar out. He's probably ready to get out. Are you ready to get out, buddy? He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> well, that's been an exciting trip. I got to do a lot of pretty cool things. We'll see, you'll be seeing these videos come out as I get them edited, which does take some time. Thanks for coming along. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Huh? Good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah, I know. There's some hay out here, bud. But there's hay out here. There you go, buddy. There you go. <clears throat> oh. There you go. There you go, buddy. Have a good time. Go find some water and some food. Okay? We'll oh, are you gonna roll? He's like... I think he might have an itch. He's like, oh man. I'm gonna check out where he's at. Well, it's been a great trip. Thanks for coming along. Let's do it again sometime. Until then, God bless.